it's Lisa welcome back to my channel today I want to share with you this month's club set from the stamps of life it's called birds to stamp and it comes with these three birds there's two larger ones and a smaller one and the sentiments you are so tweet happy bird day you are a rare bird you're my favorite old bird hi and hello and there's also this stamp and this is the side of the stick for the bird that's facing to the left and the dies, the matching dies actually come with another branch or stick for the birds that are facing front, so the birds can actually sit on those. But for this bird, it has a side stick, and that's what this stamp is for, and there's also a matching die for that. I also want to show you a, an add-on set, which is more birds to stamp, and it comes with two other birds. And some more sentiments. You are a tweet heart from one crazy bird to another. Birthdays are for the birds. Chirp up. Hello. Just wing it. And this is so cute. Listen to this. If I was a bird, I know who I'd poop on. Oh my gosh, that just makes me laugh. Okay, so I am going to be working with these two stamps and make a card today. So I will be doing some watercoloring with my Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens. And I don't believe I've used these in a video before. This might be my first time showing these pens. But if you do not want to worry about trying to do the shading and the blending with the alcohol marker, marker such as the Copics or the Spectrum Noirs, these Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens are not only inexpensive but it's an easy way just to color up your images especially your large images and by just using some watercolor so the color that I'm using here is the sugar almond pink and I just laid down some of the darker color along the edges and I'm using this water pen it is a pen just filled with water and I'm just blending that out into the image. I am using my Bristol Smooth cardstock because I find that that paper does hold the water much better than just regular cardstock. So for the feet, I did use the mustard and for the beak, I used the brown shade and You'll see that sometimes I dab with a paper towel the water just to pick it up. So if I lay down too much water and it looks like it might be puddling up, I will use a paper towel just to dab some of that off. So here I'm using the Deep Violet. And what's also nice about these pens is that you can add the darker tones to where you think the shadows go. And then you can just spread that out, spread that out with your um, water pen to lighten it up so it does look like you've done some shading although it's just super easy it's just watercolor and this kind of reminds me of the the paint um, coloring books that we used to have when we were kids what was it like the paint with num paint by number or something like that where you just take a water brush and you just paint over it and then magically the color appears but here you're just laying down the zig pen where your darkest color is and then just spreading that out with your watercolor pen so it's super easy and you don't need to be an expert to know how to do this it's just you know wherever you think you want the color and then just spreading it out with the water pen so I really like these pens and I think I'm going to be using more of them in my coloring coming up in future videos. I'm still going to be showing some Copic marker coloring with the alcohol markers. But these Zig pens, again, they are really cheap. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link down below to where I purchased several of my pens. I think I got them for $3 and some change a pen, so it was pretty cheap. So I have these three. I also did the blue. You can see the cobalt blue. I also used the light blue on that blue one. And here I'm just using some matching dies to die cut them out. Now I am going to be making a slimline card for this card today. A slimline card is one that is longer and it fits in a larger envelope. So I am using a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock, which I cut down this layer to three and a quarter 
by eight and a quarter. I also took a cloud die and I die cut that out. Just any color cardstock will be fine because I'm using it as a stencil. So you can see I just die cut that cloud out of white cardstock, using it here as a stencil to create a cloud background on this panel. So the colors that I'm going to be using are the Pixie candy and ocean. So I'm going to color up the pixie. Once I have that color down, I'm going to move my cloud border down or my stencil down and I'm going to color up the next section and I'm going to keep moving that cloud border down and coloring up the next section below that and the next section below that until I have colored up that entire panel. I'm going to be placing the purple bird in the purple section, the pink bird in the pink section, and then the blue bird in the blue section. So you see me there kind of laying out those birds. I just want to make sure that that cloud section is wide enough or tall enough to fit the bird in it. So when I first did the purple, I laid down the purple bird just to make sure I had enough clouds so that purple bird would fit. And I kept doing it with each bird. So here I'm starting to put this card together and you'll see that I did a lot of stamping and die cutting off camera. I do first of all have a card base. Nothing is glued down. The card base is a piece of powdered sugar cardstock which is cut to eight and a half by seven and scored at three and a half inches along the seven inch side. I'm also going to be using a layering piece in ginger snap which measures three and three eighths by eight and three eighths. Now this is the actual panel that I'm working with and you'll see that I die cut those branches out of the ginger snap cardstock and I die cut three of those. Each one of those birds is going to be sitting on a branch. And I also die cut those speech bubbles that you see there. Those are from the talk bubble dies from the Stamps of Life. So I die cut three of those. And for the one that says hello at the top in the purple section, you'll see that it has some purple ink on the edges. So I did use that pixie ink and I inked up the edges of that. Same thing with the you are so tweet that's sitting there on the table. That one's gonna go in the pink section and I inked that those edges up with the candy ink. And then the one that says you are a tweet heart at the very bottom, I inked up those edges with the ocean ink. So each one of those speech bubbles will go in each one of those sections on that card. You also see me playing with some of these flowers here and these flowers I got from the wreath to stamp dies. They have some little flowers in that die set as well as these miniature leaves. So I die cut a bunch of those because I wanted to add some flowers to these branches. The leaves are die cut from artichoke paper. Those flowers that you see there, I actually die cut those on the same Bristol Smooth cardstock that I used for the watercoloring on the birds. And after I die cut those, it was just plain white paper on the Bristol Smooth that I die cut them out on. I took my brown watercolor zig marker and I colored those up because I wanted them to match the beaks. I don't know, I just have this thing about everything matching. So I didn't want to use too many different colors in this card. You can see there's already several colors going on here. So I figured if I were able to get those flowers in a similar color, the best way to do it was to just color up the die cut with the same marker that I used for the beaks. So I'm just positioning these leaves and flowers where I want them to go and gluing them down to my card. And once everything on this panel is glued down, I will adhere this to that ginger snap panel that measures three and three eighths by eight and three eighths. I will then take that panel with the ginger snap and adhere it to a card base. The slimline card base will measure eight and a half by three and a half inches. And then the very last thing I do is I take some Nouveau glitter drops in white blizzard and I will add them to the center of those flowers. I don't know why I didn't show this on camera. For some reason my camera must have been off, but you can see the final card here in this picture. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will be featuring more of these birds in my card kit tutorial that's coming up here in a few weeks.